Raiders of the Lost Ark, Temple of Doom, The Last Crusade. Fuck! Now we have Indiana Jones and the Doll of Destiny where an 80-year-old retired drunk Indy gets rescued by his feminist woman niece? You've taken your chances, made your mistakes, and now a final triumph. Indy! Give him hell, Indy! Wow. My, have the mighty have fallen. <laughs> I'm Jazz Borgonzo, and this <laughs> is What's Next. What's up? Jazz Berganzo, what's next? Your daily dose. Hope you guys are doing well today on this Wednesday. Yes, we are back to work after a day of celebration, of course. But to me, the entire month is a celebration. So happy month of July. I had to jump on this because so many others have. Indiana Jones. Now, when you think of Indiana Jones, you think of the classics. Raiders of the Lost Ark, Temple of Doom, The Last Crusade with Sean Connery, which in my opinion is my favorite. Sadly, I hate to mention the Kingdom of the Crystal Skull with one Shia LaBeouf. Wow. And just when you think that you couldn't get any lower than that movie, sadly, Indiana Jones and the Doll of Destiny, the Doll of Diarrhea, Dementia, Dysentery, as Gary of Neurotic likes to call them, says, hold my beer. Wow. Just, wow. Here we go. This comes out of our part. This is from John Nolte. Disney's Indiana Jones 5 officially bombs with a pathetic $60 million opening. This wasn't a bomb. This was a nuclear crater. Thank you, Lucasfilm, and thank you. Kathleen Kennedy. The Disney grooming syndicate, Indiana Jones and a Doll of Destiny, is an official flop at a pathetic 60 million domestic opening with 130 worldwide. 130 worldwide. Even the crappiest Marvel movie that happened over the last two years made more in its opening weekend. With the help of fake entertainment media, Disney almost certainly lowballed its 60 to 65 million domestic projections and 140 worldwide projection, hoping to garner, quote, overperform, I'm sorry, overperform headlines. In other words, the child abusers at Disney likely assumed that Dollar Destiny would perform much better than it did, and ensuing headlines then would turn around for the studio becoming infamous for destroying franchises, producing box office bombs, and grooming little children. Well, the stain on Disney is so ugly that uh, this, sure, this surefire tactic backfired, and here the perverts sit. With a movie that easily costs $400 million to make and to produce. Think about that. Even the great, you know, Tom Cruise hit Top Gun Maverick didn't come anywhere close to that money, and yet did $1.25 billion in the box office. Wow. It will be lucky to make $500 million worldwide. It won't even do that. It won't even do that. How do you screw up Indiana Jones? Well, these are the same people who destroyed Star Wars, Pixar, Willow, Animation Studios, and Marvel. Well, there you go. Pretty much every review, every woke tar review, uh, reviewers warned Indiana Jones lovers in advance that Lucasfilm president Kathleen Kennedy had done to Indiana Jones what she did to childhood heroes, Solo, Skywalker, etc. Indy was emasculated by boyish, sexless Mary Sue, in this case, Fleabag, Phoebe, Waller, not Kate's. Who wants to see that? Well, no one. Obviously, when one of the biggest and most beloved franchises in history opens to just 130 worldwide, it's safe to say that no one in the world wanted to see this. As I mentioned Saturday, the Disney bootlickers at Deadline, uh, Deadline also claim that Doll of Destiny is just doing fine because you have to look at it as an older, leaning franchise pick. Oh, you mean like Top Gun Maverick, a 36-year-old franchise starring a 50-year-old, 58-year-old Tom Cruise that did 750 domestic, 1.5, I'm sorry, I said 1.25, excuse me, 1.5 billion, and that's with a B, worldwide in an older leaning franchise pick. You mean like that? Deadline? Bootlickers? 
let's do a little bit of history, shall we, regarding Disney's wonderful film outputs. June, Super Gay Light Year, bomb. July, Thor Love and Thunder, hit. Well, my opinion, bomb because it emasculated and debulled Thor. November, Black Panther Wakanda, bombed. November, Super Gay uh, Strange World, bomb. Ant-Man and the Wasp, again, emasculated, bomb. Guardians of the Galaxy was a hit, surprisingly. Little Mermaid, bomb. Etern Elemental, bomb. And now Indiana Jones and the Dial of Diarrhea, bomb. Even with those two hits with asterisks, nobody likes the woke Todd Thor, Love and Thunder, which further damaged the one pristine Marvel brand. As far as Guardians 3, it's the end of the franchise. No more golden eggs from that golden goose because they killed it. You see franchise creator James Gunn, the guy audiences uh, know delivered this hit, works for DC now. Well, I'm sure Marvel's upcoming female-led Marvels will save Disney in November. Everyone knows Brie Larson guarantees all kinds of fun at the movies. Disney needs to fire Kathleen, franchise destroyer Kennedy, stop, dist stop trying to have sex with little kids. I'm sorry, stop pushing fetiches, excuse me. Stop making everything about sex, stop checking off affirmative action boxes, and get back to delivering a good time. But Disney won't, which is the good news. Disney has also alienated normal people that all studios had left uh, are pierced, purple hair, porn addicted, porn, uh, porn addicted, wow. Disney has also alienated normal people that all the studios had left, uh, left are the pierced, purple-haired, porn-addicted abortion worshippers and that the studio has to hold on to these freaks for dear life. That means continuing to make hateful movies that suck couldn't happen to a nicer bunch of sex-obsessed child groomers. Wow. John Nolte just talk about dropping a Moab on this franchise, but Disney did that all by themselves. The one thing that stands out amongst the myriad and plethora of Disney bombs over the last two years is one Kathleen Kennedy. That is the staple Kathleen Kennedy. Destroyer franchises, Kathleen Kennedy. Now, when there was a rumor about two or three years ago that she was going to be fired, you had fans like you and me were cheering. Now, I've said in the past that I'm not the biggest Star Wars fan, but the fact of the matter is, is that when you have a legendary franchise by one George Lucas, you really can't put it up because the world is so vast. The Star Wars universe is so big, but yet they found a way, not once, not twice, but three times with the lovely Miss Rey, don't call me Skywalker because she's not, woman who knew everything from birth. And of course, a number of heroes got killed in the process just because Ray had to be number one. So you alienated three quarters of the Star Wars franchise. Then you do the same with those who loved Marvel. This is not the Marvel that Blade created. This is not the Marvel that the X-Men made famous. This is not the Marvel that Tobey Maguire Spider-Man exploded on the scene. This is the Marvel that got trashed and ruined and had a once beloved character like Thor running around naked and saying, please, can I have some more as Jane ran around with Molnar. But here's where we stand. A legendary franchise, the last legendary franchise in the John Lucas uh, bag is now trashed because of hate. Because again, you debulled and emasculated an 80 year old retired indie, you know, because a woman had to come in and save him. Nobody wanted this movie. When the rumors of this were coming along, nobody wanted this movie. They literally dragged George, uh, dragged Harrison Ford. I almost said George Harrison. Harrison Ford kicking and screaming out of retirement and said, here, here's a check. Take it, like it, love it. And while you're at it, bend over and grab both ankles because uh, Phoebe Waller Cates or whatever her name is, is going to destroy this movie, destroy this franchise, and you're going to take the money. And now you can go and retire, right? Wow. 
So sad. So sad. But for all the fans of the Indiana Jones franchise, the first three movies are the only ones that truly count. And with that being said, I'm Jazz Bergonzo. This is What's Next. Want to see more like this? Please leave a comment below. Like it, share it, subscribe to it, hit that notification bell so you guys never miss a thing. And we'll see you next time. Peace.